Hello everyone, today I'm going to review Kotaro Nishiyama's Kesanai Shashin, a song suggested by Salty Reggie on Twitter. And so let's check Kesanai Shashin by Kotaro Nishiyama. I love the intro because of those um, quick or fast-paced hits or guitar hits um, gives a, a certain nostalgic twist to the song but of course you know that the, the real nostalgic touch of the song comes from the background instrumental, the atmospheric scenes those are the ones that are creating that almost ethereal um, vibe to this song and it's just the intro itself, but you already know that this song is going to be pretty relaxed in tone. I'm not going to say that in terms of the lyrics or the performance, but so far it seems like it's going to be your textbook Kotaro Nishiyama song that is pretty laid back and has a really soothing sound. <laughs> That bass line is massive. I l th there's something I really appreciate about Kotaro Nishiyama, at least the way he has his music composed around his voice, because he does have a slightly nasally voice and he's really solid on his mid-tones, but be beyond that he's, he doesn't have that much technique. But he does mask that really well with the way that he actually sings, he sings in a whispery way, which is pretty tricky. So by that alone, he's doing something really unique with the skill set he has, covering for some weaknesses that he may have, but that he is avoiding using those and instead is making the best out of his strength. And that's pretty interesting. I've said it in the review is really really smart him and his producer they are really really smart in the way that they are making his voice shine and making the the music around his voice and not the other way around the music itself the bass line is massive and is really low which is unexpected which gives away that this song may be a bit more emotional than you'd expect that bass line is going really deep Perhaps it's, go, it's going to go off in the chorus. I, of course, think it will go off in the chorus. But so far it is really, really low. I wouldn't say violent, but a bit dramatic, for sure. And the vibe you get is a really summery one. I can imagine myself actually uh, lounging away and staring at the sunset because that's the vibe that you get from Kotaro Nishiyama's music and this song follows exactly the same vibe. Those guitar riffs are really, really good. Let's go. That chorus is exactly how choruses were structured back in the 80s. It is fast, it's straight to the point, and the focus is always on being bouncy. The bass line really goes off, not as much as, as you'd expect, but the bass line really takes uh, the spotlight for itself and leads the way. The guitars are really interesting because you have that dun 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 that main melody that of course is playing from the very start until the very end of the song, but
but then you have some loungy, funky guitar riffs playing on your right ear, and those are never in the spotlight in the chorus, which is interesting. The focus is put entirely on the ethereal synths that are creating that uh, atmosphere for you, the soundscape that you are diving into, and then you have the bass line leading the way, carrying those emotions alongside Nishima's voice. It's good because you are contrasting two different things. The bass line is, of course, bassy, and Kotaro Nishima's vocals are far from being bassy. He is, of course, whispering, which makes the voice sound slightly lower than usual, but is not within that range. So that's a good contrast there between his voice and the bass line. The song itself is pretty emotional. It has a, a little bit of nostalgia going on in there. You can feel it in the chorus. And the way it progresses so fast, yet the tempo is not necessarily fast, but the song goes by in the, f in the blink of an eye. Especially the chorus goes by in the blink of an eye. It's a pretty short chorus. It's really interesting how fast and fleeting those emotions are. And in a way, it is like the title, the Kesanai Shashin, which is an image you can't erase. So that's pretty interesting because you fly by through that image or through that memory, but it's still there, but you try to your best to avoid it, but it's still there. Perhaps because you want it to be there, because you don't you don't want to lose that specific memory, that specific photo. It's interesting. It's go it it is a song that goes through a nostalgia trip and it's not usual for Kotaro Nishiyama, although his sound is all about nostalgia, city pop is all about nostalgia, but this time around the song goes beyond the sound and has those lyrics brought in and you can actually theorize about it all you want really because the lyrics are left to your interpretation. That drum feel was subtle and it felt really well. It was basically the cue to join or to kick off the second verse. Ta -ta -ta -ta. The entrance. Muffled vocals. Okay. So you have muffled vocals in a really brief part of this song, which gives away memories. Once again, it's the imagery of memories, and it sounds like he's relieving, the protagonist of the story is relieving those memories of that Kesanai Shashin, which is pretty interesting. It's a little detail, of course, if you are listening to this song in a casual way, you won't notice that detail. Uh, especially if you're not paying attention to the lyrics. But it complements what is going on in the lyrics and it gives you a concrete imagery by going the muffled way and then shifting to those clean vocals. The, those aren't necessarily too clean. There's a bit of, wh of wet in the vocals, but still much cleaner than those that are muffled. So muffled vocals are used usually to give way to memories or the imagery of memories in these kinds of songs, of course. There's a multitude of uses for muffled vocals depending on what you want to achieve with the song or, or with a, a performance. In this case, is to tap into the memories and make you 
go through those as if you are the protagonist yourself. going on in the background there are some scenes that make it sound like it's almost like something is slowly dropping from the sky also almost as if it's stars falling from the sky it's not a good way to explain this but it sounds like something is actually dropping uh, it can symbolize a multitude of things it can it can also not symbolize a thing and I'm over analyzing it but it's really interesting as a detail in the background because you have the bass line leading the way you have the guitars on your right you have the simple sampled drums going on in front of you and then you have the scenes that range from atmospheric to splashy to all kinds of things and then you have the of course you have the baseline wrapping all that up and at center stage you have the vocals but back in the background you have those little details that give it a dreamy twist to the song that make it make the concept come to life in different ways or enrich the concept itself those little scenes that are in a higher key playing in the background are almost like I wouldn't say ripples in the water because that would be too delicate. It's not that delicate. It's almost like something is falling from the sky. It can also symbolize tears if you want to go that route. If you feel like the song goes really, really emotional. I feel like the song is emotional and nostalgic, but not that emotional to the point that someone is actually crying or or this sort, but it can also symbolize that if you want to go that route. But that's a little detail going on in the background and it's really really beautiful in terms of what it achieves to make the the instrumental come to life in different ways and not be only that, oh of course the, the bass line is leading the way. Is there anything else in the instrumental? And people don't remember. So there's more going on of course, this is the outro, so you need to have something else adding a little bit of emotion before the song wraps up. And there you go. You start with the main melody, you wrap up with the main melody. That's textbook music composition right there. So. Yeah. Okay, that's a different way to wrap up a song. You cut it midway and then you give a false sense of, oh, the song wraps up. No, there's more. That's long note there on the synth and guitar. Kesa um, Shashin was a song that when I was reviewing the CD, Laundry, I felt like, of course, I love Highway Cruise. That's my favorite song in the album. But Kesanai Shashin has that nostalgia of a time. For people that may be watching this video and they were born in there in 2000 to now, uh, maybe you won't feel the nostalgia in the song. Uh, for those like me born in the 90s, this song is incredibly nostalgic. 
it almost channels the songs that I listened to when I was a kid. So it's pretty much to say that this song has 80s influences. Of course, Kotaro Nishima's music is all about city pop. City pop was really, really big in the 80s in Japan. It is a music genre that is specific to Japan. And he has actually incorporated that music genre in a way that it he made it sound uh, modern, but still carrying that same nostalgia from back then. So you have a funky song that you can jam to it. It sounds uh, like a modern song, but it still has that twist from being inspired by the, the great uh, sound from the 80s, from city pop in the 80s, perhaps even the, the late 70s. So there's that. The lyrics themselves are pretty emotional. You have a lot of nostalgia going on in there. Kotaro Nishiyama's performance is really, really solid. It's, it's actually a pretty good singer as a solo artist. For what he does, I'm not saying that he should be belting or he should be using vibrato like crazy or even trying to pull off crazy stunts like Toshiki Toyanaga, for example, or Yumuchida or Soma Saito pull off. That's not the type of singer he is. Is much more contained in the way he performs. He knows what he can do. He knows how he can pull off the things he wants. So the way he actually tackles his solo career is pretty interesting. Most people watching this video will think, but well, Kotaro Nishima doesn't sing really well or particularly well. I do believe he does, and I do believe he's really smart in what he is doing because both City and Laundry are two of the best albums I've listened in the ca in the past couple of years. And even really top-tier singers, I'm not going to name which ones, uh, can't pull off albums as consistent as his. So that's really something that people should have into attention. He doesn't need to be extremely technical. He needs to know the skills that he has as a singer, and the tone he has, what he can achieve with that, what he feels comfortable pulling off. And he does exactly that with each song. Kesanasha Ashi has the emotion it has because of the way he is comfortable performing the song. He's not pulling any crazy stunts with his voice, he's not making it sound overly emotional, he just is performing the song and feeling the lyrics and the performance speaks for itself. The instrumental, the bass, is the main instrument. Of course, like in all city pop, either it's the bass or the guitar, because those are really, really big. You also have the saxophone, but you didn't have any saxophone in this song, so you can't talk about the saxophone. But the bass lines for his music are always big and really, really punchy and meaty. I really love a good bass line. Those bass lines that are groovy give off that, I I wouldn't say necessarily disco, but it has influences of disco and funk. Once again, it embraces a lot of what city pop is all about. It's a mix of funk, disco and pop and made it nostalgic because of the time it was released. Kesanasha Shin, for me, it's a song that stands out for its good composition. I wouldn't say stellar composition because this is a fairly simple song, but it is extremely effective, which is awesome. Then you have the performance by Kotaro Nishiyama that didn't disappoint at all. He actually gives a really, really good performance. And I find myself every time I hear this song smiling or grinning like crazy and bobbing my head front and back because this song is really, really good. The vibe is amazing. The lyrics, of course, are a bit nostalgic and you can resonate with those, especially if you have memories you don't want to let go of. So you have that as well. As a whole, this is a really, really, really good song. And I noticed that not many people actually enjoy it or actually found it good, which is weird. Once again, Kotaro Nishiyama is one of, I, I would say, out of all Seiyuu artists that have debuted in the last couple of years, is really underrated 
but he's really a good singer and his music is always a treat to listen to, especially if you like to go back in time and revisit or times that you didn't leave or times that you lived and you long for again. So you have that as well. All in all, Kesanai Shashin by Kotaro Nishiyama is an amazing song. Thank you very much, Reggie Salty, for suggesting this song. Uh, at the time that the, the song was suggested, of course, I didn't, I hadn't even reviewed the CD itself. But if you have time and that CD is actually available for free to stream on Spotify, do give it a listen because uh, Laundry, the CD uh, from which this song comes from, is really, really good. One of the most consistent released in 2021 and overflowing with good vibes. So this is all from me. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. There's more to come, so please stay tuned for another update. Thank you.